This will be a lecture on how to do a quantile regression. In this video, I will first provide a few examples of quantile regression. Then I will talk about the quantile regression model, including the equations and the estimation procedures. Then I will describe the quantile regression coefficients and marginal effects and how they need to be compared to the OLS model. And finally, I will conclude with the advantages of a quantile regression. So here are a couple examples to get us started. From consumer economics, um, we can study the effects of household income on food expenditures. And you can do this with a normal regression. However, you would not know if that effect is different for those people that have low food expend expenditures and those that have high food expenditures. And if you would like to know if that effect differs uh, along the distribution of the food expenditures, you need to use a quantile regression. Another example comes from education where we can study the factors affecting st student scores. And you can imagine that those factors would be different or they might affect differently those student scores for students that are very high performing with very high student scores and for those that have low student scores. So in these cases, we would use quantile regression. So to continue, we use quantiles to describe the distribution of the dependent variable. Notice that we're not talking about the independent variables. We, we will only concentrate on the dependent variable and how it is distributed. And quantiles and percentiles would be synonymous. So if I say 0.99th quantile, that's the same as the 99th percentile. And the best known quantile is the median. The median is the point of uh, 0.5 quantile. Um, the standard oil less model uh, looks at the relationship between one or more independent variables x on the conditional mean of the dependent variable y. And we get pretty much one set of coefficients beta for this model. In a quantile regression model, we would uh, look at the relationship between x and the conditional quantiles of y rather than the conditional mean of y. So we can estimate quantile regression in many different quantiles. In fact, whichever ones we choose, either the 25th, 50th, 75th, or the 5th and 95th percentile, or you can decide which quantiles you want to estimate. And this quantile regression gives a more comprehensive picture of the effect of the independent variables on the dependent variable because we can show different effects. Now notice one practical consideration is that the distribution of the dependent variable is important. That needs to be a continuous and it, it shouldn't have zeros or too many repeated values. We want a nice uh, continuous distribution where, so to speak, the values change from one observation to the next. This is when quantile regression works the best. If a third of your sample has zeros, that's not the right model to use. So let's look at the quantile regression model. It's described by the following equation, yi equals xi prime beta q plus ei. So notice that instead of like having one coefficient beta, now we would have sets of coefficients beta q where these coefficients would be associated with the qth quantile of the dependent variable. So now a little bit on the estimation procedures. We know that the OLS minimizes the sum of squares of the model prediction error EI. So, so we maximize those EI squared, the sum of those. In the median regression, which we also call the least absolute deviation regression, that minimizes this value here, the summation of the absolute values of EI. So notice how this is different than the sum of squares. And the quantile regression would minimize something similar where we would have EI here, the absolute value of that, but we would have Q and 1 minus Q where we would give asymmetric penalties for underprediction and overprediction. So if we have the median regression and this is 0.5 and this is 0.5, 
that collapses to the median regression. So if we expand this, expand this uh, expression a little bit, we would have that the Q's quantile regression estimator, beta Q hat, minimizes beta Q over the objective function, and this is one very, very long expression. Again, this one is the same as this one, only that now the error is written out. If you notice, I have substituted it from the equation above right here. Uh, and this is the same error here. And here we have a penalty of Q for under prediction where the actual value of Y is actually higher than the predicted value. And we have a penalty of 1 minus Q when the actual value is lower than what we predicted by the model. So we have for over prediction. So this is, this is the function that the quantile regression minimizes in order to find the coefficients. So in contrast to all less than the maximum likelihood, the quantile regression would use linear program, prom, programming methods to find the coefficients. And we would have beta Q instead of beta to make clear that we have different choices of Q estimate different values of beta. And as many quantiles that you want to estimate, you would have that many sets of coefficients beta. So the quantile regression coefficients and marginal effects the standard quantile is specified to be linear, and here you have Q equals Xi prime beta Q. And if you take um, the derivative of this expression right here with respect to Xi or Xj, you would basically find the coefficient beta Qj. So in this case, we have very similar marginal effects where the coefficients are indeed the marginal effects. And each of these parameters would estimate the change in the specified quanta of the dependent variable produced by one unit change in the independent variable. And one thing that's important is that every time you interpret these marginal effects, you have to say at this percentile, uh, this quantile, like at the 25th quantile, we have an effect of, and then you quote the magnitude. So when we, when we talk about all less estimates, there are the average uh, coefficients, you know, they're at the mean of y, so we are not quoting at any, at any quantile, but here we have to. Now, another point to make here, make here is the last bullet point that I have, that the marginal effects are for infinitesimal changes in the regressors, assuming that the dependent variable remains in the same quantile. And what this means is, for example, suppose that you have a regressor, a dummy variable of 0, 1, say whether or not it's male or female. And suppose that if it's a 0 um, for female, we have much lower incomes than if it's a 1 for male, which we have much higher incomes. And so we don't want to jump from 0 to 1 and jump completely on different quantiles for, for the distribution for the distribution of the dependent variable. So you got to be aware of that. Not much to do, but you got to be aware of this, this uh, issue. So unlike interpretations of OLS regression, the interpretations of the quantile regression uh, results need to specify which quantile of the dependent variable they refer to. So as I mentioned again, you need to say at the 25th percentile, we have a one unit change in X brings so many units change in Y. And in this type of uh, quantile regression, we would be concerned with two types of significance that are important for these coefficients. The first ones are when the quantile coefficients are significantly different than zero. And these are the standard significance that you can think of when we deal with all less models, same idea. However, we are much more interested in another type of significance which is when the quantile coefficients are significantly different than the OLS coefficients. This shows different effects along the distribution of the dependent variable. So we basically may have lower effect for lower, for lower quantiles and higher effect on higher quantiles or uh, the other way around. But we want to show this differential effect across the quantiles, and it's very important to show that our quantile coefficients differ from the OLS coefficients because that's a justification on us for us using the quantile 
regression. Finally, talking about the advantages of the quantile regression, uh, first of all, its flexibility for modeling data that has had heterogeneous conditional distributions, or it could be a non-normal distribution or something like that. And the median regression is more robust to outliers than the normal or less regression. And finally, the best reason is that it has richer characterization and description of the data, where it can show different effects of independent variables on the dependent variable across the whole spectrum of the dependent variable. So thanks for watching this video and join me to see the quantile regression example video.